The Steilhardgranate, commonly referred to as the stick grenade or the potato masher because of its appearance, stands as one of the most recognizable German infantry weapons through both world wars. But how did this grenade perform on the battlefield compared to the US Mark II pineapple grenade? Let's answer that question and take a closer look at its effectiveness in combat. If you're passionate about military history and want to see more videos like this, hit those like and subscribe buttons. It's free and helps the channel grow and reach more viewers like you. Introduced in World War I, the Stahlhandgranate saw its first action in the trenches. By World War II, its design had evolved but retained its distinct long handle. The later versions were more streamlined and efficient, proving their metal on various fronts. While most grenades of the era were spherical or cylindrical, the Stahlhandgranate's elongated shape stood out. The handle of the Stahlhandgranate provided leverage, making it easier for the average soldier to throw it in a more controlled manner. Think of it like the difference between throwing a baseball and a javelin. The handle also allowed for a spinning motion, similar to throwing a tomahawk, which could help with distance and accuracy for those trained in its use. This would provide a significant advantage to German troops, as they would be able to maintain more distance when attacking or defending. The US Mark II, with its iron body, was inherently designed to fragment, scattering lethal shafts upon detonation. In contrast, the Steilhandgranate was primarily a concussion grenade. However, German soldiers often added a fragmentation sleeve, known as the splittering, which slid over the can, turning it into a shrapnel-producing weapon. Another innovation born out of battlefield necessity was the Bundel grenade. This wasn't a new design, but a tactical improvisation. German soldiers would bundle several Stahlhandgranate heads around one central stick grenade. By attaching these additional warheads to the primary grenade, the explosive power was significantly magnified. When detonated, this makeshift bundle created a far larger explosion than a single stick grenade, proving effective against fortified positions and enemy bunkers. While it became a potent tool for infantry, it also highlighted the adaptability and resourcefulness of soldiers in the face of ever-evolving battlefield challenges. The Mark II had a timed fuse. Pulling the pin and releasing the handle would ignite the fuse, leaving soldiers a few seconds to throw. The Schallhandgranate required the soldier to unscrew a cap and pull a cord, initiating its fuse. Though both mechanisms were efficient, the Stahlhandgranate's method demanded a bit more dexterity under fire. The Stahlhandgranate's design, while innovative, had its drawbacks. Its larger size made it harder to carry in bulk, limiting the number of grenades a soldier could have on hand. German soldiers would often have to shove these grenades into their belts or boots, while the Allied soldiers could simply carry the smaller and more compact Mark II grenades in various pockets or pouches. Unlike the Mark II's consistent fragmentation, the Stahlhandgranate required its spittling to be a true fragmentation weapon. Without it, the grenade's effectiveness against entrenched infantry diminished. Though the Stahlhandgranate of World War II wasn't without its flaws, it often showcased distinct advantages over its allied counterparts in specific battlefield situations. Its unique design and functionality resonated with the tactical needs of the various combat scenarios, leading to its recognition and adoption by other nations. This fact alone underscores its perceived effectiveness and the broader influence of German ordnance during that era. The Stahlhandgranate's influence wasn't just confined to the European theater. Japan integrated Stahlhandgranate-style grenades into their own arsenal. These adapted weapons saw the heat of battle on the sun-baked sands and dense jungles, playing their part in the grueling environment that was the war in the Pacific. That, however, is a tale for another time. There you have it. Let us know in the comments which grenade you think had the better performance. And remember to hit the subscribe button if you want to join the growing community that is Warhorse History.